So today we start talking about objects and, you know, it's taken us a little while to get here, but we're ready. And this is exciting because Java at the end of the day is an object oriented programming language. In Java, the notion of an object is very much front and center. We've been keeping it in the shadows up until this point, but today we're going to stop doing that and we're going to start talking about what objects are and we'll really be using them uh, you know, for, throughout the rest of the semester. So I think the, the better definition of object that you can find on Wikipedia is part of this definition of object-oriented programming, where it says you know, object-oriented programming, which is what we're going to be doing for the next month, next month or so, is based on the concept of objects that contain data and code, data in the form of fields, sometimes known as attributes or properties, and code, code in the form of procedures or methods. So up until this point, we've been talking about these things separately. We've been looking at data, and we've learned how to store data in individual fields. We've learned how to store data in arrays. We've talked about strings, which were an object, but we were still kind of looking at, essentially as kind of a container for a particular type of data. We've also talked about methods. You guys have been writing for the last couple of weeks a series of functions to do things like encrypt a string or rotate a string or rotate a string the other direction or parse some data out of a string that contains C a CSV type thing or go through an array. Um, and what objects do in this really beautiful way is they bring these two concepts together. Um, and so an object you can think of both as behaving sort of like a variable and that it stores information, but it's also gonna allow us to store information in a much more flexible way that really starts to allow us to model anything. So up until this point, you might've thought, well, you know, there's a lot of data in the world that I can't represent as a single value or as an array of the same kind of value. Objects really allow you to model anything you want in the world and build programs that work with that data in a very natural way. At the same time, that data brings along with it methods. So strings were a good example of this. A string contains data, the characters that make up the string in order, but we've also been using the built-in string methods. So everywhere a string goes, it brings trim, it brings length, it brings split, it brings two care array. These methods follow the data in the string and they act on the internal data that's stored in the string. So what we're gonna show you how to do over the next few weeks is design your own objects. Uh, you can now create your own types because in Java, a class which defines a category of objects is a type that you can then use to declare variables of that type and manipulate them. And that's really sort of the true power of object-oriented programming is the way that it allows us to represent real things in the real world and to really build data models and features of that data that are appropriate to it um, that are a great match for a lot of real world problems. So, so that's kind of where this is going, and it's kind of a nice fusion of the things we've done so far, where we've talked about variables, we've talked about methods, now we bring them together into a new conceptual framework, and one that also allows us to really model pretty much any data that we can come across.